What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video we're going to be talking about the top 10 stocks that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here in the third week of April in 2019. We're also going to be talking about some stocks that you guys actually called out either in the comment section on Friday's video or in our call out section in our Discord group chat. So before we do get into all of these different stocks, for everybody out there that finds value in these videos all I ask you to do is to go down below and hit that like button it really supports me and supports the channel in general and if you're actually new to the channel I have two links down below in the description box for you one of them being the discord group chat and the other one being the Facebook group both of these communities are 100% free of charge and I guarantee you guys you'll find a ton of valuable information in there and you'll be able to interact with a ton of knowledgeable and helpful people in those two communities. So again, 100% free of charge. They are linked down below in the description box. And without further ado, let's talk about these 10 stocks and really a little gist of what the overall market did yesterday. And if you guys want to see a more in-depth market update, go check out Friday's video. I broke things down a bit more in depth there. But just a quick run through the S&P 500 very quickly, the SPX, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies, we pretty much gapped up here. We pushed to a higher high from this little consolidation phase, this little consolidation, um, you know, couple of days that we were seeing here over the past uh, week, really. And then on Friday, we saw that big pop up, right? So what I'm waiting for and what I'm watching for this week is to see whether or not we're going to really pop up and test the 2915 level because that is the next resistance that we are really facing here in terms of the SPX, which was a support from back in September of 2018. And why I'm watching that level and, and instead of this 2905 level is because as of Friday's close, it seems like we are trending and trading above this 2905 level since we did close above that level. And it seems like we're holding that level as a new support. So pretty much now, guys, for this week, I'm going to be watching this little horizontal channel, whether or not we're going to be trading between 2905 to 2915. Are we going to maybe sell off and break this level of support and then head back to the 2890 level which is the next support are we going to pop up again and maybe test 2915 and then break out of that level of resistance to then test all-time highs these are some things that I'm watching for for this upcoming week and be mindful we're about 33 points away right now from the all-time highs this is literally a day or two of green and the markets will be at those all-time highs again that we were at in the beginning of October of 2018. So be mindful of that when you're planning your swing trades. Another thing I want to mention here, guys, is that we are in earning season. Earning season, a lot of the big name companies are reporting their numbers here over the next couple of weeks. So keep that in mind as well when you're taking your positions, when you're day trading, when you're you know taking swing trades. Be mindful of the companies you're putting in money to trade, to swing trade. Understand when they're reporting earnings because this is super, super important because it can really honestly fluctuate the price of that stock up 10%, down 10%, depending Depending on you know whether the earnings were good and whether the market perceived those earnings as good. So keep um keep all of these different things in your minds, guys. And let's talk about now. Let's just hop right into it. The ten stocks that I'm personally watching for this third week. I have them linked or really written rather all here. So first on the list is Apple, guys. Ticker symbol AAP. L. And Apple is actually a stock that we were watching really for these past couple of weeks. I've been talking about it in pretty much every single weekly 10 stocks I'm watching video because it honestly hasn't been disappointing. Literally every single week, it seems like Apple has been higher than the previous week in terms of its price. And this past week, we actually saw a bit of a rejection on Apple stock at around this 200 to 201 level of resistance. 
resistance and we saw a retest at the old support roughly at about 196 to 197 um you know this past friday we saw a bit of a sell-off all the way down to about 196, where we were actually able to confirm the bounce on that old support, and we reversed very aggressively. And I actually took a position in Apple right around here this past Friday, roughly in the $197 uh, dollar level, and I'm planning on swing trading these shares. So why I see potential in Apple, guys, is because we're maintaining the 50 simple moving average support right now heading into this week. We're maintaining maintaining that old support uh, or the support rather at around 197 and I want to see really um, a continuation of the push to the upside and, and for it to test $200 before putting more money into Apple and if we were to test that $200 level which is the resistance right now about a couple of points away from where we are now and we were to break that level this could be a good breakout pattern for the continuation of the uptrend and we could potentially be testing you know 207 208 210 and at that point I'd be up a pretty solid amount on my position on Apple so I'm watching it this week guys a, an, an ideal move would be a break out of 200 and for it to head up to 205 210 which would be roughly my goal uh, sell price on Apple so the second one is actually one that one of our members in the chat or on the in the comment section ended up calling out ticker symbol B X Blackstone Group LP. So overall, what I'm seeing here in terms of BX, let me just pull out my drawing tools very quickly so we can draw some support and resistance levels. But right off the bat, I'm noticing a very nice thing right here. We're seeing a reversal of the overall price you know, of this stock, right? We're not downtrending anymore, making lower lows, lower highs, being rejected by these simple moving averages. We're now treating these simple moving averages as support levels. We're trending above them. We're making higher highs and higher lows, and we're really reversing in price. And one thing I want to point out to you guys, I'm sure a lot of you already know this, but you can use moving averages to identify trends, right? When you see a 50 the simple moving average cross below a 180 day simple moving average this green one here is the 50 SMA this yellow one is the 180 SMA that's pretty much a bearish move right when you see the 50 cross below you can expect more red more potential bearish uh you know sentiment uh you know moves in that stock when this happens does it always happen no but really when it does happen you should keep your eyes open to the possibility of it happening, right? And when we see the 50 SMA crossing above the 180 SMA, that's a very bullish move. You can potentially expect more green. So we can see really in practice here, this happened perfectly with BX. You know, we crossed down here, more bearish movements since that cross. And now we're popping up this bullish cross and we've been seeing more green movements from there. So if we draw out a really a critical resistance right here on BX, you know, we're at a very critical level right now. The $35 level, we've been rejected there back in the beginning of November, back towards the beginning of December, back in, you know, towards the middle to the end of March this previous month. And now we're seeing some resistance at that same exact level now this past Friday. So really, the breakout move here on BX is going to be if it breaks out of this $35 level, the next spot it could potentially be going to is around $36.67, which would give it roughly, let's see off the top of my head, I would say about a 3-4% margin. Yeah, roughly about a 3% margin up to the next resistance if we successfully break out of this $35 level, which is what I'm honestly going to be looking for in BX and what I would recommend for you guys to keep an eye on. And again, I am not a financial advisor. This is strictly, you know, my personal opinion. I'm giving you guys my perspective, my outlook on these stocks. Don't just buy them based off of my opinion. You have to do your own research. You have to do your own technical breakdowns on these so you can understand, um, you know, the patterns, the movement for yourselves. But this one's looking pretty good, especially if we break that level and then head to 36. If we break 36, the next spot is probably going to be around 37. 
$275 to $38. So BX is looking pretty good. AMD and NVIDIA are the next two I'm going to be talking about here. And these are both... um really stocks that I've been talking about in, in, over the previous couple of videos. I made a uh, the three swing trades I'm watching or I'm trading in April rather. These were both in those videos and I figured since the patterns are still intact, since I'm still actually in these positions myself, in these stocks uh, myself, you know, I want to talk about them in this video as well. So AMD Advanced Micro Devices, the honest, uh, you know, the overview of this one is we pulled back from $30 down to about $27. And from there, we've been maintaining this 50 simple moving average as a support over the past couple of trading days. And we can see that right here, right after the pullback, we've been maintaining it. And that's a very good sign that the stock wants to continue this uptrend pattern at a higher low from the previous and it quite frankly excuse me wants to continue this truck upwards to the previous resistance which at this point is around $30 but before we do get to that $30 level we have to break 28 and maintain that level which was an old resistance here $28 as a new support and this is what I've been saying in the past couple of videos I said this in the in the discord chat as well AMD needs to break 28, maintain that level before I honestly add more money into it. I'm already in AMD roughly at about 27.50, that range. I got in a couple of days ago and I've, and I've just been patiently holding the shares. So I want to see a break to the upside here. My target sell right now is at about $29, $29.50. And if we break 30, I'm going to reevaluate the position, maybe add some more or really... Um, you know, build a new position at that point, um, you know, for a trade on AMD. Because if we look back here to previous price history, and previous price history obviously doesn't always... Um, you know, uh, tell us that the stock's going to go there again, but it just allows us to make resistance levels, support levels, so we can really set barriers to see where we could be potentially headed, you know, if the stock does end up continuing to push up, right? And if we do get back to $34, I think that's roughly a 15% move from where we are right now, which if you were to buy now and hold till $34, right, that would be a pretty, pretty solid swing trade. Trade, but again, price previous price action does not always indicate where the future is going to be for a stock. Just remember that, guys. So AMD looking pretty solid. Keep an eye on it for this week. NVIDIA, very similar pattern for NVIDIA, right? We've seen a bit of a pullback recently, but we're still maintaining the 50 simple moving average as well as this 188 support, you know, at the close of the market on Friday. So what I'm honestly going to be waiting for this week, are we going to maintain these levels, quite frankly, right? Are we going to maintain ultimately above this 185 level? Ideally, I would like to see it maintain maintain above the 188 level and above the 50 SMA. These are some things I'm going to be watching. And if we just go back a bit closer here on Nvidia stock, let's say the 20 day one hour, we're noticing a quite a bit of a strong resistance here around the 191 to 192 level on the stock. I want to see a break out of that level for it to head into the mid 190s before I add potentially more money into Nvidia. And my goal sell price is roughly around 197, 198 right now on Nvidia. That's where I do have my limit sell as of now. And again, if we do end up breaking that level, maybe 194, that's where I want to add more money into Nvidia. So really, I'm looking for it to trade in between this horizontal pattern and eventually get back up to this next resistance or the really the second resistance after we, we break 193, if we break 193 at $203. So that's what I'm looking for in terms of NVIDIA. The next two are also ones that you guys ended up shouting out. CRM, I actually did take a look at this one a bit before recording this video and noticed a wedge pattern on CRM. And let me just explain to you a couple of different scenarios that can happen here on CRM, which would really determine what we're going to do, whether we're going to trade the stock or just not touch it whatsoever, right? So you're noticing it's making higher lows as well as lower highs at the same exact time, right? Putting it in this wedge pattern. So 
Either one of two things is going to happen this week, guys. We're either going to break the resistance of this wedge, which is going to be a breakout bullish pattern with the next resistance spot being at around, let's say, $163, which would be right here, or we're going to sell off, retest the support of this wedge, and if we break that right to the downside here, that's going to be a huge bearish pattern. So that's really all I have to say on CRM. Just keep an eye on the price action. If we pop out, that's going to be bullish, right? If we get rejected, start to head down, retest the moving averages as supports. We break those supports and we test the wedge support and we break that. That's going to be a very big bearish pattern on CRM. So Ford, ticker symbol F, this is a call out that was made on my previous video. And just to put this out there, guys, Ford actually has an insane dividend on it. I haven't checked in a couple of weeks, but I think at its low right here the dividend was like eight percent seven point five eight percent or something like that so since the stock has been pushing up i would imagine the dividends roughly six percent right now maybe six and a half percent nonetheless that's an insane insane dividend so if you guys are into dividend stocks you know income producing investments you might as well take a look at ford because in terms of a yield it's doing very well but remember when you're investing in dividend dividend stocks, you're not only looking at the yield, right? There's a lot of different components that you need to look into. One of them being the payout ratio in terms of looking at dividend stocks, right? So I don't want to, I don't want to go too in deep, uh, too into depth on that. But again, just do your own research on dividend stocks. But I just wanted to mention that this one is a six to seven percent, um, you know, payer right now. So in terms of the technicals here on Ford stock, it's actually looking pretty good, right? On the 184 hour chart, it seems like we are reversing on Ford stock right now. If we go to a bit of a longer look on the one year chart, we notice the stock has been getting hammered, right? $12 down to $7.41 at its low. It lost pretty much almost half of its value, a little bit less than half of its value, but pretty much a lot, a lot of value in the company was lost, right? But we're seeing now, instead of these moving averages acting as resistances now, we're acting, they're acting rather as support levels, right? We're not getting rejected. We found a bottom. We've been making higher lows, slowly reversing out of this mess that we've been in in terms of Ford stock. And keep an eye on, the, on this 50 SMA, guys. This is looking like it's about to do a bullish cross above the 180 SMA. We're already seeing the candlesticks here, the price of Ford breaking out of these resistance levels. This could mean more green coming up for Ford stock. So this is looking pretty good on a long-term reversal basis here. And if we just hop back into the 180, we can draw out some resistance levels very quickly to keep an eye on for this stock. So we can see we clearly broke out of that nine level, no problem, right? Now, we're actually at a, a you know a shorter term resistance from back in the beginning of uh, November of 2018 at about $9.65. So I say if we break the 950, 960 level of resistance, we could be headed back to $10 per share on Ford in terms of a technical basis. So thank you for this call out. This one's looking pretty solid, but in terms of some shorter term action here, you know, it does seem a bit overextended. We haven't had a significant pullback in Ford really in the past three weeks at this point. The RSI is a bit overbought. So if we were to pull back here, maybe retest the 50 SMA as a support, maybe at about $9.15, maybe $9.10, this could be a level where I'd potentially hop into Ford as a swing play. But keep in mind, Earnings are coming up, and let's see, maybe you can hop in on a dividend play, but I don't know when the X dividend date is. It might be... Um it might be over, or, or maybe it's this one right here, 423. I just have to double check that. So just keep an eye on Ford, ticker symbol F, looking pretty good right now. And let's get into Disney, guys. Disney has been... <laughs> the talk of, I guess you can say, the stock market community, especially here on YouTube over the past couple of days. And why, the, why this happened, go check out my previous video, but the gist of it is... 
Disney really talked more and gave more details on their new streaming service coming here, I believe, in the fall of 2019. And that stock, the stock, this news caused the stock to surge nearly 12% all the way up to $130. So you may be asking yourself, Stas, are you going to buy at $130 on plans of swing trading it up to a higher price? No, this is something that I'm not going to do, but I'm calling this one out and I'm talking about this one in this video because there's a couple of different things that can happen here, right? What I personally think is going to happen is we're going to see a little sell-off in Disney here over the next couple of days, right? Typically when a stock flies up like this on good news, you know, it can hover around that price for a couple of days, but... Typically, you know, some investors, some short-term traders, especially some short-term money in the stock, it tends to start to funnel out, right? People are taking their profits, excuse me, causing the stock to fall down a bit, right? Maybe into the 124, not 124, maybe 127, 128. Maybe if it starts to sell off a bit more, that is where I'd I'd potentially take a position, right? This is where I would be like, okay, we're selling off. I want to see a support, a new support start to form, a new bottom, right, before I do end up getting into Disney, right? So you can, you know, wait for the pullback potentially, right? Maybe get in on a pullback for a swing trade. You can potentially, uh, you know, play, let's say a put option, short term put option on Disney, you can short the stock short term if you think it's going to, you know, go down, but just realize this can go either way, right, which is why I'm strictly mostly going to be watching it this week, I'm not saying I'm going to buy on Monday 100%, but I want to see, are we going to pull back, are we going to continue to truck up on this good news that we got, you know, this is something that Really, I'm just watching and I'm very excited to see. But just keep an eye, you know, on this RSI level as well. It's very, very overbought, touching nearly the 90 level right now, which is absolutely absurd, right, in terms of the RSI. So just keep an eye, guys. Are we going to sell off here? Are we going to pop back up? Are we going to consolidate a little bit and then maybe start to sell off a little bit? You know, these are some things I'm watching this upcoming week in terms of Disney. So AKS and Rio, let's talk about these two two very quickly. So AKS, you know, AK Steel, a lot of the steel companies out there have been getting slaughtered, right? You know, AKS, you know, X, these have not been doing so good, right? This is United States Steel. This has gone from $38 to $16. You know, AKS, if we're going back, you know, it's gone from five to, you know, $2.50. You know, these are really on a technical basis, not stocks that I'm interested in trading, right? We're downtrending, lower lows, lower highs, you know, the bearish cross we're about to see, or we really already saw another bearish cross here over the past couple of weeks. You know, this is something that I'm not really looking, um, you know, to, to trade, complete, to be completely honest with you. But let me just, um, you know, draw out some resistance and support levels so we can see maybe if these levels, um, you know, get broken, maybe if we start to hold above these levels, we could be maybe reversing back to the upside, right? So we're seeing we're actually at a support right now at about $2.50 on AKS, roughly from the previous support from around the end of uh, January in 2019. So let's say hypothetically we break this level. I personally think on a technical basis here, we're going to be headed to another lower low on AKS, which honestly, it seems like it's already breaking that level. It seems like a fall knife right now we're seeing the ema cross below the 50 sma which is also a bearish uh you know move there these are things that are slowly scaring me away from aks but nonetheless guys who knows what can happen? We can get a big pop here. We can break out of these levels. And if we break out of $3, you know, that's going to be a resistance where if we break out, you know, that can be a bullish reversal to the upside. But as of now, what these technicals are telling me, there's more red to come on AKS. So Rio, let's talk about this one very quickly. Ticker symbol RIO. This is one, another one that got shouted out in the Discord group chat, I believe. And in terms of Rio right now, 
we're noticing it's really at a high here. It's at $63.46. Not too sure if this is an all-time high. Let's see. It's looking like it is an all-time high. Actually, nope, it's not an all-time high. The all-time high was back in 08. Then we crashed horribly. Oh, my goodness. 139 down to $22. Wow, if your wealth was tied up in this stock, I feel real, real sorry for you during that uh, big downwards push there. But nonetheless, you know, we're seeing a bit of a reversal here on Rio over these past couple of years. And let's just see, you know, some longer term uh, resistance levels at $60. We can see all right, we're breaking out of those levels now. The next one could be at around $76 here, $73, $74, you know, judging on this 20-year chart. So this is actually not bad, you know, if you're looking at these longer-term charts here. The fact that we're breaking out of this resistance at $60 and we're slowly starting to, <coughs> excuse me, push up to the mid-60s, you know, this could be a good sign that we want to head back up to $70 in terms of Rio stock. Just be careful here on the shorter term um, you know, basis. It seems like Rio does want to pull back and retest this 50 SMA. If it does end up pulling back, retesting the 50 SMA, maybe back down to the old resistance at about um, you know, $60. If it tests that and holds it as a new support, that could be a good entry point on Rio, ticker symbol RIO, and that's what I'm watching for this upcoming week. So the last one I want to talk about here is Facebook stock guys. So Facebook right now is at a resistance at about $180. And we've been talking about Facebook and it trading between the 170 to 180 level here over the past couple of weeks. And it finally seems like it wants to break out of that 180 level, guys. We're so, so, so close. We're almost there. All we need to see is a break above 180 and for it to pull back, maintain it as a new support, and then for it to slowly reverse from there to test the next resistance which is at about $185 so for this week that's all I'm watching guys right I want to see are we going to push to 180 are we going to start to fill the second gap up to 185 that is where I think we can capitalize on Facebook stock but remember earnings are coming up which can fluctuate it heavily to the upside to the downside just like all these different stocks we're talking about and a bunch of ones that you're probably already invested in already trading earnings is coming up so be mindful of that so that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. Those are the 10 stocks that I'm watching for week three of April in 2019. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And if you're new to the channel, guys, feel free to subscribe again. Hit that notification bell. My name is Stas. I make videos, you know, pretty much daily, really throughout the week daily, sometimes on Saturdays and every single Sunday. I have a video on trading, you know, market updates, trading updates, personal finance, the stock market, stock news, stuff like that. So if you are interested, feel free to just hit that subscribe button and get into the community. Hit that, or rather, leave a comment uh, down below. Let me know what you guys think about these. Any other stocks you're watching, I would love to know. I'll catch you all in the next video. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Good luck trading this week. Peace out.